The presentation today is being brought to you by SAA's Technical Subcommittee on Encoded Archival Standards, TSES. My name is Kerstin Arnold and I'm the EAD team lead in TSES. Our my co-hosts and co-presenters are Karen Predenberg, the TSES co-chair, Andrew James, Venkat Srinivasan, and Silke Jagodzinski. Today's session will be focusing on the major revision of EAD, the encoded archival description. And with this, I'm handing over to Karen, who will first start with a presentation of TSES and our work. Thank you, Kirsten. So just a brief introduction to who you are actually listening to today. So TCAS, you heard what the acronym is, the Technical Subcommittee on Encoded Archival Standards, and we are hosted by the Society of American Archivists. So we have a longer presentation regarding the background and what work we are doing available through SIA YouTube channel. But in short, we take care of the formats you use to manage and share archival information. And what we really need is the users perspective and comments, suggestions and bug reports so we can actually bring our work forward because we are not doing this alone. We do have a presence in more than one space. So besides having these kinds of webinars, we actually we have a website at the Society of American Archivists where we describe the group and have some news. The big information point for the whole uh, technical subcommittee is on GitHub. There is where you can find our notes, our all different schemas, our tag libraries, and the wiki. Uh, EID is publicated on the Library of Congress website and EIC at the Staatsbibliothek Berlin. More ways than one to contact us at the same time also. So as I said, webinars is one way of getting in contact with us and give you comments. We do have a mailing list hosted by the Library of Congress. It's named EAD, but it covers all the EIS standards. We do have an email address, which you can, where you send the email to one email address, but it will give, be handed over to the correct person, which also means that you can actually use more than English if you want to. Uh, we cover a uh, lot of languages in the whole technical subcommittee. If you have an issue, and then I'm talking about an issue with our EIS standards, you can report that through GitHub. That requires you to have an account. So if you don't have an account, we actually have a form up, up on the SIA webpage where you can report an issue and we will make sure to take care of it and also register it in GitHub because we are tracking all our issues through GitHub. The team itself, the whole technical subcommittee, we have uh, about 25 members where the it's 50% are from SIA and the rest in, is international members and where we international currently mostly Europe, but we have, as you see, uh, also members from South America, Africa, Asia, Oceania. So we are truly an international committee. We have split the work into teams because we need to, you need to have focused team doing the work and not everybody trying to do everything at the same time. So we have a team for EID, which is the one you are visiting today. We have one for EACCPF and we have one for functions. Supporting these three groups, we have a schema team, which are working with the different XML schemas, uh, the technical part of the tag libraries. And we have the the team that are actually helping us today, setting in this meeting up and this webinar up, being the outreach team who are our central point for providing you with information. Looking into what we do, we work with standards and we do have a minor revisions, which are on a rolling revision cycle. Uh, we have used the ID for the setup and how EID is working and it but it's also it's 
uh, is used for all the different EIS standards. So we have the minor revisions, bug fixes, minor bug fixes, uh, spelling errors. You can't believe how many spelling errors we get when we aren't all native English speakers, but it's interesting to see them. We then also have the major revisions, and that's where we actually revise the whole standard. And that is something that are following the guidelines by the Society Standards Committee, which are our housing body. So we belong is a subgroup to the Standards Committee, and they have all the sayings about how often a standard should be revised and so on. And you can read all about it on the web page. And a major revision, updating a standard, that is actually what we have started. And I'm going to let Kirsten have the microphone back and actually present this revision that we are inviting you to aid us with. So you go ahead, Kirsten. Um, so thank you very much for, for the introduction, Carvin. The major revision of EAD. Um, and I want to start with just giving you an, an idea of the timeline that we are currently working with. Next slide, please, Carvin. Um, so as Karen mentioned, um, there are specific kind of guidelines and rules that we are following um, set up by SAA and their standards committee in terms of when we should be reviewing um, standards for major revisions. Um, and that process started end of 2020 when we submitted a proposal to revise EAD to standards. Um, and to SAA Council. And throughout the last year, we've been trying to get a better understanding of the status quo uh, in terms of uh, which version of EAD is used, how EAD is used um, to kind of lay the grounds for uh, potential future developments. And at the end of the year, we started general call for comments, which is currently still open until the end of the month. So maybe the conversations today will um, give you some ideas and thoughts um, in terms of features that you would want to see in the new version of EAD. And we will, of course, welcome your feedback uh, in terms of that. We will then start reviewing the feedback that we received from the community uh, probably during the second quarter of this year. And throughout this year and the next year, we want to establish uh, options like this one today to uh, engage with the community. So kind of um, possibilities to talk with you about specific parts of the description that we might want to look at um, updating or looking into communications with specific um, sub-communities, so to say, uh, of our international community. And that could be national sub-communities, but it could also be looking at specific types of institutions or institutions with specific types of material. And all of that ideally would lead us to being able to publish a draft for the new version EAD 4.0 um, and have another call for comments by the end of 2023. So that will again be a chance for you to uh, provide us with feedback, to provide us with comments with regard to what we would be suggesting a new version of EAD could look like. Um, so there will be more possibilities to engage with the community throughout 2024 leading to preparing a final version of EAD 4.0 by the end of 2024, early 2025. Next slide, please. And after that is kind of the administrative steps. So we have to go through with SAA. So we will submit our suggestion for a new version of EAD to standards committee and then to SAA council for their approval. Um, and um, hopefully getting their approval, we will be able to publish a new version of EAD um, in the second or third quarter of 2025. So that is the general timeline that we are currently looking at. Um, there might be changes in that depending on um, how things evolve, but um, in general, that is kind of the idea that we have set up. During this whole time, the EAD team will be meeting monthly to discuss um, the feedback that we've received. And uh, of course, being international, um, these teams, uh, team meeting are all happening virtually, but we are also looking into the possibility to maybe have one or two multi-day 
meetings uh, in person throughout this whole timeline um, to really kind of dig into the details. Um, this is something that we have seen during the recent revision of EACCPF, our kind of sibling standard, um, that this definitely helps to get a common understanding and common basis for further conversations. Next slide, please. So just to highlight this point once again, um, so what we really want to do uh, and, and try to do in this revision process is to, to open up the conversation with the community going along the whole revision process. So not only having kind of these standardized points of a call for comments and uh, in between things are only happening behind the scenes, but really trying to do things like today's webinar um, or maybe targeted webinars on specific parts of the descriptions or other events where we can engage with the community and check back in with you um, to get your thoughts and your ideas. Next slide, please. So what is the status quo that we found during the last year in our engagement in, in that context? Um, and what are the, the big things that we need to take into account when thinking about a revision of EAD? Um, the first thing, um, and this might also be something that is represented within the group here today, is that we know that there are essentially kind of two versions of EAD out there, which are still widely used in parallel to each other. So we've got EAD3 as the newest version published in 2015, but we also know that there are still lots of users of EAD 2002. So if we are talking about a revision of EAD, we need to take this into account and make sure that a new version of EAD has benefits for both EAD 2002 and EAD3 users alike. Next slide, please. The other thing that we are looking at is that EAD is more and more becoming an exchange format. So while there still are lots of people who are doing hands-on XML work with EAD, so using EAD in an Oxygen or other XML editor um, and kind of doing manual adaptations of, of the XML files, we also have a big part of the community where EAD is only used as an import-export format. So something that comes out of your archival management system and that you do not necessarily have to engage with in more detail as long as everything is either coming out of the box or um, you have someone else taking care of the more technical part of things. So a new version of EAD also needs to look at this from the point of view of what do archivists need to describe the material that they are maintaining and what do users might need in terms of supporting their search or research functionalities, um, while it would then be on the technical subcommittee to look into the question of how can we encode this in the most suitable way for machines to be uh, working with it. Next slide, please. In terms of the, let's say, content part of the revision, there are a few strands that we have identified so far. Um, this is mainly coming out of um, the work within TSES and the engagement that we've done so far. Um, so there might also be new things added depending on the feedback that we get during the call for comments. One big topic uh, is alignment with ECCPF 2.0, so the new version which is currently being finalized for submission to SAA. Um, and even during the revision of ECCPF, we already started with this work to uh, come up with an approach that allows us to make the best use of anything that is shared between both standards, so between EAD and ECCPF. Um, so ideally kind of coming to the point that any elements and the attributes that you would have available in both standards are also defined and usable in the same way in both standards rather than having AD doing it one way and ECCPF doing it another way. Um, and just to mention a few things that are already coming out of that um, is that EAD in its new version will use camel case spelling with regard to the names of elements and attributes. We will have some enhanced and changed approaches to how dates and places are encoded, which will be the same across both standards. Um, and we will have additional possibilities for referencing document internally, 
uh, so from one element in an EAD file to another element in the same file, or externally. Um, and the second one is specifically looking into uh, supporting linked open data vocabularies. Next slide, please. Another big topic is EED's relation to other standards. And on the top of that list is records and contexts. Uh, so the new conceptual model and ontology that the expert group on archival description at the International Council on Archives has been developing throughout the last eight years. Um, and kind of picking up on that development and seeing how EAD features into that. Uh, so this is essentially following up um, the relationship that EAD has currently with ISAG and other standard maintained by ICA. But we are also looking into standards like premise or other preservation me metadata, uh, BIP frame, or um, other standards from related domains, uh, schema.org archetypes to support um, more broader search and discovery of archival information. Um, and we are also looking into potentially providing the schema deliverable, so the technical part of um, the standards in different formats. So for example, JSON or JSON-LD. Next slide, please. And then there are a few kind of topics that we want to have another look at and make sure that we can provide EAD in a version that supports those part in the best way. Um, and uh, on the top of that list is our relationship to digital objects. Um, and that is digitized material, but also born digital material. And while we, uh, do not want to kind of get into uh, the detail of describing everything that you might be able to tell about a digitized or born digital object. Um, so in terms of kind of the technical things, because there are other related standards that already kind of allow you to do that. We want to make sure that everything that might be essential in the context of ED in the context of describing your records um, can be done in EED or that we support a connection to these other standards that already kind of take care of that. Another aspect is looking at the support for multilinguality um, and that is language attribution. So making clear in which language information has been provided, uh, but also looking at possibilities to have kind of um, the same description in different languages in, the, in, in one EAD file and how to do that. Mapping and integration of linked data vocabularies, uh, that's one thing that I already mentioned earlier. And then a specificity for EAD is that we want to look at the granularity of encoding. So uh, the question of what do we do with all the purely formatting options that EAD currently includes. What do we do with the mixed content model um, where you can have a descriptive text and then specific parts of that text tagged as, for example, a date or the name of a person. Um, and one thing that we are considering in this context is whether we might end up providing a simple and an extended version of EAD. So a simple version that would be stripped of all of that and could be used, for example, in, in database uh, connections, making things easier for that. And then a version that might still include um, some of these options um, if you want to use EAD in a different way. Next slide, please. Next to the um, content related aspects of the revision, we also are looking at some contextual aspects to support the community specifically in moving over from one version to the other um, and trying to make it as easy as possible to upgrade. Uh, and that starts with the point that we need to make the incentives, the benefits clearer when it comes to upgrading from EAD 2002 uh, or the EAD 3 to the new version. Um, it goes along with official transformations from um, the one version to another that we would be providing or looking to provide. And we are also looking into the question of whether or not we can come up with templates for the new version in different formats to help people kind of adapt what they already have um, to, to the new version of EAD. Next slide, please. Then there are kind of the, the more um, 
so the, the less technical aspects around this, um, and that starts with the tag library, uh, which I think is already kind of an, an established um, helpful tool. And that will be extended by a best practice guide, which is something that the ECCPF team has already been working on in the context of the ECCPF revision. And it essentially kind of looks at elements and use cases in a slightly different way. So while the tech library goes through element by element and explains how you can use each element separately, the best practice guides kind of looks at groups of elements and, and makes connections between them uh, for specific use cases um, and also provides different examples and more extended examples than the tech library might include. Um, this also relates to mappings and crosswalks with related standards, so specifically looking at RIC, but potentially also others. Um, and again, just generally kind of looking at providing example files and use cases, maybe also best practice examples, um, which is also where the community comes in. Because while we all are representing institutions that, that work with EAD in one way or the other, uh, we might not always cover all the possibilities in our context. So we are always kind of bound to having use cases and example files from the community to support that. Next slide, please. And then the last point about the contextual aspects of the revision is um, tools and techniques. So one thing that we are um, thinking about is whether we should see to team up with, let's say, the, the wide, more widely used solution providers um, to see if we can kind of come up with a possibility for them to have plugins um, where they can kind of more easily upgrade to a new version of, of EAD as an import-export format. Uh, but also looking into the question of um, potentially cooperating with Syncrosoft, which is the company behind the Oxygen XML editor, uh, where there already are a few kind of templates uh, that you can use for EAD, for example. Um, but we want to make sure that these templates are kind of up to date um, and are not necessarily specific to a certain institution, but maybe more specific to a, a certain context of use. Um, and then also looking at everyone who's doing education on the encoded archival standards, um, and that might be in different settings, might be at a university or, or any other institution of higher education, uh, or it might be in, in webinars or other kind of types of courses. And ensuring that the resources that we provide from the central point of view are more easily adaptable to different contexts. Um, and that also includes, of course, being adaptable to different international contexts or national um, use cases. And with this, I'm ending the introduction on our current thoughts and, and line of thoughts in terms of the revision. And I'm asking Silke to now start the breakout room. So you will see a pop up asking you to join one of the breakout rooms that we have established and we'll see each other in about 40 minutes back in this main room to hear what the different groups have been discussing. So um, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, to the facilitators and thank you to all the participants uh, for your thoughts. Um, I hope uh, you all had um, interesting discussions in your breakout rooms. Um, and we just want to use the last 15 minutes to kind of give a, a brief overview of the conversations in the breakout rooms um, and then maybe have some time, additional time to for, for general questions if there are any. Um, Karen, may I ask you to, to start first? Yes, I can start. Uh, so we were... Um... New, new students and new archives, archives professionals in our group. And we really could see the difference between being trained in US and being trained in Europe. Where US, you actually have EID as being required in some of the different universities. But here we heard that in it's just having been mentioned in passing and really you need to read up on your own. So really what we, we are talking a lot about what is needed since we also see that 
EID is maybe not used in all the countries in Europe in the same way as it's been used in the US, in US where we here often have, yeah, it's an, really an export format. It's something that the system puts out for me and I really don't need to know the EID file itself. I just need to do, use my software in a proper way. Mm. So we have been talking about easy accessible, so you actually can study on your own if you don't can't, can't take a class. So something really, not the best practice guide, something really shorter, shorter online tutorials or uh, in paper form or anything. So you can really learn EID on your own if needed. So I think that brings together everything. We, we were a talkative group. So we do have the Jamboard, but we don't have any no save chat this time. So it's been really interesting and I'm really happy that we have the, this group because it gives new in, input to us. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Karin. Andrew, uh, would you like to go next? Oh, um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to go next. I was just um, um, flicking through my notes to, to see, see what so. So although um, our, our group was intended to be sort of um, focused on sort of, um, 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 teaching and learning, we realised that most of us were didn't have the background of um, being being educators. So we were talking about sort of, um, sort of um, learning from our own perspectives, which sort of um, 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 included um, yeah educators sort of being um, being sort of um, learn learners um sort of um being um um beginner users and sort of um, more um experienced users as well so in so in talking a bit about sort of in terms of the, the the things that people really 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 need to know which would um include things like some of the different purposes that um ead can be used for and how it can but sort of uh sometimes or maybe it's about um it's um, usefulness often lies in being being able to sort of outlast other systems that data is is, is managed in, like a specific collections management system, and just um, sort of maybe some really really um, basic things like um, EAD being good as a data exchange format, and they um, or and down to more sort of um, sort of um, the factual things like the um, hierarchical nature of um, EAD files. Again, I think um, some people thought it would be um, helpful for. Um, um people appear people, people using EAD to, to um, 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 understand sort of XML more generally and sort of a bit more formally because some of us have had to struggle to work it out for our, um, um, ourselves and then um, as well it's it's I think it can be sort of inter interesting and useful to have the um, sort of combined perspective of like somebody who is um, an archivist and trying to understand more technical things and somebody who is more technical and trying to understand archival things. Um, 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 as well there and in terms of, I think in 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 general people who are who, um, do, um, teach, teach teaching and learning about sort of, um, EAD in um, our experience was quite um, tied up with um, teaching and learning about um, cataloging and archival description in general so it was um, often taught sort of in tandem with um, I, 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 um, uh, learning about ISAG as well and things Oh, and there was one comment that struck me as, as a, um, particularly interesting was this was the, was that um, it it can p p p uh, perhaps be more useful to um, teach um, EAC CPF before EAD because um, learning uh, because of uh, the um, um, particular importance of um, prov um, um, prov provenance and the way that uh, sort of as archivists we start by thinking about the record creator as much as about um, um, the records there but, but we've um, um captured some various comments in the jam board and there was also um quite a few comments um in the chat as well which which i've i've um, ca 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 captured thank you okay perfect thanks very much um then i'll just go with with the last group um so we had kind of a, a mixed group um as as the the last group with um people representing um aggregators 
on the national level um, and, or people representing um, organizations that, that also advise others in, in how to use ED or, or other kind of related questions around archival description. Um, so we also um, had a little bit uh, of a talk with regard to application implementation profiles of the standards and, and what it is that that people are looking at um, uh, kind of adapting the standards to a very specific um, context. Um, and we, uh, in this context, um, also kind of um, fell back on, on a few things that we touched on in the, in the main presentation. Uh, so for example, this question of potentially having a, a core schema um, and an extended schema. Um, which then was also tied into the question how, how institutions in general um, can work with EDU specifically when they uh, need to kind of put some more time in but don't really have um, the resources in terms of, of staff. Um, so specifically looking at smaller institutions where you might have only one person doing everything, um, which then also kind of led into uh, the point that um, it would be really useful to um, have some more easily accessible resources. So kind of binding this back to what Karen said also from her um, group um, in terms of, of having uh, something where you can, can more easily uh, see what what it might be useful for in, in your context. Um, also supporting this with um, examples and, and use cases and maybe best, best practice uh, studies um, that you can relate to your own work so um, that you can adapt that accordingly. Um, we also had kind of a, a, a few discussions around um, the sometimes creative use of EAD. And I mean, I think, I think that is something that probably we, we all can relate to. Um, so uh, probably everyone has been in a situation at some point where you wanted to use EAD, but um, you didn't necessarily kind of find the um, a, a good match in the element list for, for the information that you wanted to provide. Um, so there, there always will be kind of um, elements in there that are, tweaked in a certain extent. Um, and that's also just something that I wanted to pick up in, in the main room, because I think that's that's one thing that we are really interested in uh, hearing about in the terms of the revision, because um, there might be very good reasons for, for needing to tweak. Um, and um, so if we can kind of see and identify trends where people all around the world um, feel the need that they, they need to tweak um, EAD in order to provide certain information, uh, we might not just need to have a look into actually officially including new elements to encode that information in a more standardized way. Um, so if that is something that you know is happening also in your context, um, please feel free to reach out and um, let us know about any of these um, more unconventional uses maybe of certain elements. Um, with this, um, I just want to open the floor for the last few minutes for any um, questions, any more general questions that anyone might have also maybe with regard to what was presented before we went into the breakout rooms. Um, if there's anything that anyone wanted to have clarification about um, or just add as a comment, um, you can do so via the, the chat as now being back in the main room, um, we all have been muted again, or just raise your hand and then one of the co-hosts can um, enable you to unmute if you want to say anything. Otherwise, if there are no specific questions right now, I'll just ask Karin to maybe share the last two slides that we have in our slide deck. Um, so this is just a reminder to, to all of you to 
if you have um, a specific issue that you want to report, anything that is not working in, in EAD for you at the moment, or any suggestions for, for new things, um, please make sure to, to use the possibilities that we have to provide your feedback, um, either when you are on GitHub directly, or if you are not on GitHub, uh, you can also use the second link that we have, which is a simple general web form. Um, and then on the next slide, um, we also would want to hear from you a little bit about kind of um, some, some feedback about this event today. Um, and I'm just gonna put all these links also in the chat so that you have them more directly available. Um, so this feedback form is just kind of to get an understanding of how you how you found the experience today, if it was helpful, um, if you would see uh, want to see kind of more interactive sessions like this, um, so that we can see um, how to best cater for it. Um, and with this, I'd like to close the session. Thank you very much again, everyone. Um, and uh, I hope you'll have a, a good rest of your day and um, hope to see you soon in similar contexts. Thanks very much. <laughs>